Hi guys, let's change things up a little bit in this video and instead of just focusing on micro and macro effects of various things, we're going to look at micro and macro causes, micro and macro factors, micro and macro influences. This is an alternative style of long essay question that you might get and you've got to be prepared if it is something like that to still know your micro and macro of whatever it might be. We're going to take four different types of question that could be different from effects and see how simple it is still and how we can make sure we can smash it. So let's take reasons for protectionism. Let's look at micro and macro reasons that we can bring in here. So let's start with micro reasons for protectionism. We can talk about protecting workers. Now you'd have to focus on the individual workers and how their living standards are promoted, um, their wages are protected, their family outcomes are protected, you would have to go there. Protect against dumping, very much. You go into the micro effects of dumping, the impact on domestic businesses if products are being dumped, again the impact of jobs as a result of that. You would talk about protecting standards, uh, product standards, health and safety standards, environmental standards, um, worker rights, that kind of thing as well. Definitely micro impacts there, micro reasons for protectionism. What about macro reasons? You can talk about protecting infant industries, giving them breathing space, economies of scale benefits to grow, develop, to then compete worldwide. Why is that good? It allows for diversification, especially in developing countries where there is over-specialization concerns. This is a good macro argument for balanced growth, sustainable growth over time. Protect against unemployment. So instead of going the individual impact of protecting workers and jobs, you can talk about protecting unemployment as a macro objective. You can talk about tariff revenue for the government if tariffs are used, the government revenue benefits, you can talk about solving a trade deficit through less import expenditure. Link that to the current account position, the current account deficit. So simple stuff there. Very, very simple. It's just a different style of question, that's all. Let's do it again for causes of a current account deficit. Well, let's go to micro causes first. Number one, number two, and number three all link to high unit labor costs, which drives up costs of production for firms, which then means prices are gonna be higher and exports less competitive. So low productivity, high relative minimum wages, relative means compared to the rest of the world, and strong trade unions. All of these drive up unit labor costs. They are all separate micro causes though. And then you've also got resource depletion. So if there was an industry and um, foreign economy that was very export dominant, and now suddenly resources are depleted, um, so maybe it's a primary sector and we've depleted those resources, we're not going to get those export gains and therefore there could be a current account deficit, the end result of that. What about macro causes? Well, high growth at home, economic growth at home means high incomes at home, which means sucking in of imports. Maybe it's low growth abroad. If there's low growth abroad, there's going to be less demand for our exports and therefore driving a current account deficit. A strong exchange rate can do that. That's definitely a micro cause. High relative inflation makes our exports less competitive. Again, relative means higher inflation relative to other countries, especially our major trading competitors. Poor investment, yeah, poor investment at home by domestic firms means that technology might be outdated, capital machinery outdated, that drives up costs, keeps export prices high and not competitive, but also loss of a comparative advantage. So yeah, countries abroad, beat us with comparative advantage, therefore our industry is now going to decline, deindustrialization, structural unemployment, more importantly, if that was a major export industry for our economy, we're not going to see the exports anymore, change it, we're going to see imports coming in, can drive a current account deficit as well. Let's keep going, look at other topic areas that could be separate for micro and macro effects. Let's now go to micro and macro barriers to development. Let's go to micro barriers first, low productivity, a massive issue in developing countries, definitely a micro barrier here that keeps incomes low leads to a vicious poverty cycle keeps costs high for firms and therefore not very competitive internationally poor education and health maybe that's because of low incomes people can't afford to access them maybe the market failure is there predominantly lack of government funding to plug the gap and that again is going to keep productivity low and keep incomes low poor infrastructure yeah again public goods you need government funding if that can't happen, then it's going to detract from FDI, it's going to reduce competitiveness, and it's going to reduce the accessibility of hospitals, schools, etc., and jobs. Volatile commodity prices, yeah, if prices are falling, that's going to impact on producer revenue and livelihoods. Resource depletion is a major issue. Um, if the resources that are depleted are major exports, um, the sources of growth and development there. Power of MNC, so if a developing country attracts FDI, these multinational corporations, what are they doing? What influence do they have? over government policy making. If the policies then are in favor of these companies and not in the interest of development, that's a major barrier to development. What about macro barriers? 
Protectionism abroad is an issue if a country is export dominant. Volatile exchange rates keeps trade away, keeps FDI away, keeps potentially aid away as well. Uh, corrupt governments are a massive problem in terms of how they use tax revenue, how efficient they are with government policy. Low savings is a massive, massive problem. Low savings means a lack of investment and that can really hinder economic growth and that can hinder development outcomes. Unbalanced growth, they're talking about over-specialization and that means if there is a shock somewhere or if there is a fall in international prices of a commodity, that can lead to a shock recession and a major barrier to sustained continuous development outcomes. What about this final topic area we're going to look at and that is the influences on international competitiveness. What factors can drive international competitiveness? Remember that international competitiveness is not just about the price competitiveness of a country's exports, it's also about non-price competitiveness and it's about the ability of a country to attract FDI. So all of those make up international competitiveness. Let's start by looking at micro influences on competitiveness. Productivity is a major one because that will drive unit labor costs, which will then drive price competitiveness of exports, but also uh, the ability to attract FDI. Strong regulations increase costs and increase prices, but also make it harder to bring FDI into your country. Labor market flexibility keeps costs low and therefore prices low, but also attracts FDI. Competition and subsidies can both keep prices low but can also attract FDI. Strong investment in R&D, that's very good for both price competitiveness and non-price competitiveness. Linked to that is the strength of the banking sector. That one's very important for yeah, domestic investment but also ability to attract FDI. If you have a strong banking sector and it's easy to access finance, that's a big factor in attracting FDI but also boosting domestic investment thus driving price and non-price competitiveness. What about macro influences on competitiveness? When we talk about tax rates, low corporation tax rates, low VAT rates are gonna be very good in keeping costs low, prices competitive, but also in bringing in FDI. Low relative inflation rates keeps your export prices competitive. Uh, exchange rates are very important, of course, strong exchange rates versus weak exchange rates, and then the price competitiveness of exports and imports, therefore. Uh, infrastructure, the strength of infrastructure, so important for price competitiveness because all firms in the economy rely on transport infrastructure in some way. So the better the transport infrastructure, the lower the prices are going to be or the more price competitive exports are going to be, but also strong infrastructure attracts FDI. Stable government finances promotes FDI, which is a big thing, as well as domestic investment which means price and non-price competitiveness. And what about protectionism? Protectionism um, that foreign countries are imposing or even that our country is imposing can affect our competitiveness as well. Especially if there are tariffs on raw materials that our country is imposing that can increase prices and worsen export competitiveness. So there we go. We've got some of those major topic areas that aren't necessarily micro and macro effects completely covered. And hopefully you can see guys how easy this is. If you just practice this on your own, train your brain to just know about micro and macro simultaneously, you will realize how simple this is. Look how many points I've been able to come up with. You don't need as many of this when it comes to your essays at all, do you? A few of these points and you'll have a brilliant long essay question done. So practice hard, watch all the videos on the channel, make sure that you put that time into your revision and you'll smash it when that paper through essay comes. Thank you so much for watching guys. I'll see you all in the next video. Thank mm -hmm. you.